Well, good morning to everybody. I'm Anessa Faldina, resident of the hospital of Trieste. And um, probably it's time to go back to the real life. And <laughs> we are talking about our consensus document on the standardization of echocardiographic evaluation of systolic function in mice. Monitoring systolic function is a key element uh, in experimental studies to understand the pathogenic mechanism of cardiac disease and to explore the beneficial effect of innovative therapies. But what is this systolic function? When we talk about systolic function, we are talking about the contractility of the heart, so the capacity to contract and to pump the blood in the, into the main circulation for the left ventricle and into the pulmonary circulation for the right ventricle. But um, the measure the, of the pressure into the, into the left ventricle during the heart cycle, probably it will be the most appropriate evaluation of a systolic function because the left ventricle is a pressure generator. But to do this, uh, it will really require a micromanometer into the left ventricle. That is something that's not usually possible in the clinical scenario or in the laboratory setting. So we need some less invasive or not invasive technique to evaluate systolic function. We are talking about echocardiography. Uh, echocardiography is a reliable technique that is possible to use and for evaluating systolic function in the clinical scenario, as we can see from echo, human echo, and in the laboratory setting in a mouse echo. And uh, with the variation of the left ventricle volumes, we can indirectly measure the systolic function and so the ejection fraction that is mo the most used parameter for evaluation of systolic, of systolic function of the heart. But if there are a lot of recommendation and standardization in a human psychocardiography to, est to estimate the systolic function from the main society, the American ones, the British one, and the European one, there is a lack of standardization in echocardiographic evaluation of systolic function in mice. So what we, we're trying to do is to propose a consensus document that try to give some recommendation that should be widely accepted from all the labs to standardize the evaluation of systolic function in mice. And we try to give some recommendation for all the steps of echocardiography study. The first part of the echocardiography study is uh, the preparation of the mouse, so we should discuss the anesthesia. Um, even though uh, researchers agree that cardi cardiovascular physiological measurements are best studies in conscious animals, because anesthesia could depress the left ventricle function, what we know is the mice is scared, try to move when the transducer touch their skin, therefore a light anesthesia is recommended to increase the reproducibility of the measurements and for appropriate data comparison obtained from different animals from different labs. This is a list of the main anesthetics that we use in the laboratory setting. Isofluorine, ketamine, plus xylazine are the most used and yeah, but uh, ketamine and xylazine uh, is of course the anesthetic of choice for surgeries, but in the last years, a lot of studies de demonstrated the, a significant uh, cardiodepressant effect of this anesthetic that make this choice for echocardiographic evaluation of systolic function unacceptable. And this cardiodepressant effect uh, is of course uh, higher than other anesthetics as as you can see from this table, this is the heart rate of mice treated by ketamine plus xylazine. This is much lower than the heart rate of mice treated with other anesthetics. So the isoferan is, of course, the most used anesthetic in uh, echocardiography evaluation of system function, but we should consider that also isoferan can affect the left ventricle function. In particular, after a prolonged exposure to these anesthetics. But what makes this anesthetic, the anesthetic of choice, the possibility to adjust the dose during the echocardiography study in, uh, in response to any variation of the physiologic parameters of the mouse? Another part of the preparation of the mouse is the monitoring its physiologic parameters. Uh, what we say that the anesthetics can alter some parameters uh, like, such as uh, heart rate, body temperature, and blood pressure. 
And this alteration can reduce the ejection fraction, the systolic function of the heart. So what we should do is to monitor them. And if the blood pressure is something that uh, is a little difficult to do in all the labs, what is very important to monitor the heart rate uh, is possible by placing some electrodes on the limbs of the mouse so we can obtain an ECG and uh, the heart rate of the mouse for the duration of the whole uh, echocardiographic exam. And we try to, studying the literature data, to give some recommendation uh, about uh, how much has to be the heart rate. And we found that the heart rate should be around 450 BPMs. This is because an heart rate, heart rate less than 400 BPMs could depress the systolic function of the heart. Even the monitoring the body temperature is essential to standardize a echocardiographic study on mouse, on the mice. And to monitor the body temperature, we can use a probe and try to maintain the blood pressure around 37 degrees by positioning the mouse on a heating pad. And what we should try to avoid is the hypothermia because it Hypothermia is another reason to the of reduction of the solid function of the contractility of the heart. So at this point of the preparation, we should shave the mouse and apply the echocardiography gel. This is, should, it should be the correct position of the mouse on the eating pad, with the electrodes on the limbs, with the anesthetic tubes on the mouse, of the face of the, of the mouse, and with the isofran that is uh, continuously provided. The second part of a cardiography study, and the main part, is the evaluation of systolic function. What we do usually in the, in the laboratory setting is use two different techniques, the MOD technique and the BMOD technique to evaluate systolic function. We are going to discuss them both. About the MOD technique, a lot of laboratories use this technique to evaluate systolic function. They are very easy to perform and uh, allow us to obtain in very short time some parameters about the systolic function. How to perform it? We should place this, the transducer on the left side of the chest turn and, uh, in, on, with the notch pointed toward the right shoulder so we can obtain a long axis view of the heart. A correct long axis view should show simultaneously the heart valve, the mitral valve, the apex of the left ventricle, and the outflow tract of the right ventricle. From this position, we should turn 90 degrees to clockwise the transducer, so we can obtain a short axis view, and the M tracing should be placed where the two papillary muscles are more visible. So we can obtain some MOS images that are displayed as a continuous function of time. We stop the recording, and at this level, we can measure the wall thickening of the, of the left ventricle, of the anterior wall, and of the posterior wall, and the diameters in diastole and systole by the helping of the ECG that we have doing the exam. From this value that we have obtained from the modern technique, we can calculate some systolic parameters, such as the function shortening that is the most immediate parameter, the volumes, the unsystolic and then diastolic volume of the left ventricle. And from these values, we can calculate the ejection fraction that is the most famous and most used parameter for the systolic function. But yeah, we talked about before that the mod technique is based on some geometrical mathematical assumption that can lead to some rough estimation of the systolic function of the heart. It is, it is very important because the change in volume during systole and diastole derive from a linear change measured on the short axis without any contribution from the longitudinal contraction. This is very important in particular when we have a heart with an area with an infection 
that is uh, placed on the apex. So if we calculate the ejection fraction on the basis of a linear changes that is not affected from infraction, we can have an overestimation of the ejection fraction. Another important point is that the left ventricle has an irregular shape, but with this mathematical and geometrical assumption, we have a modified ellipsoidus as a regular shape that is not real. So a lot of studies have demonstrated uh, during the time that the BMOD is uh, the most acceptable technique to evaluate systemic function. We have two modalities of BMOD, the monoplanar evaluation and the multiplanar evaluation. The monoplanar evaluation is performed on the long axis view of the heart. We should tracing the endocardial border of the left ventricle uh, doing and diastole, this is the maximal extension of the left ventricle, and doing and systole, that is the minim minimal one, and the left of the left ventricle in diastole and systole. From this value, another time, we can calculate some values that are used to estimate the systolic function. We have the volumes the ejection fraction, the stroke volume, and the cardiac output. But another time, also this technique is based on some geometrical assumption that see the ventricle as a regular shape. And we have some errors. We, we risk to have a lot of errors, in particular when there are some wall motion abnormalities that are localized in some part of the heart that are not visible in the long axis view. So what? we are recommend to try to perform always a B-mod multiplanar evaluation. This is the most complete technique because you take the measurement from different view, from the long axis view, that is this one, and from at least three short axis view. The basal one, when we can see the mitral valve that is moving, opening during the art cycle. In the middle short axis view where we see usually the two papillary muscles and the most distal one that is the apex of the left ventricle. And it shares a lot of similarities with the B-plane method of disc that is also called the um, Simpson method that we use in the clinical setting where we calculate the ejection fraction using two different views of the art, the four chambers view and the two chambers view. We take the measures from both uh, view in sister and diastole, and from the combination of these values, we can calculate the ejection fraction in humans. And yeah, it's something that we do also with the B modern multiplanar evaluation, that is the valuation of the left ventricle volume in sister and diastole, uh, by the, from the sum of a stack of elliptical discs, discs. So from the long axis view, we take the left of the ventricle in sister and diastole, and from the single short axis view, we take the area in sister and diastole. So from these values, we can uh, re recreate a left ventricle geometry that is something more real than what we have with the ML technique. And with the modifying Simpson rule, we can calculate the ejection fraction. And this is very important, in particular in some pathological cardiac disease, uh, because the infection area uh, is not always present in all the discs, but can be placed in only one or two of the <coughs> discs that we are evaluating, as we can see from this video, where the infected area is placed on the apex. So the evaluation of all the, um, yeah, all the extension of the left ventricle could reduce the errors that we have with the MO technique. Remember to avoid some common pitfall. In particular, in the long axis view, try to not miss the RT valve or the apex of the left ventricle and try to place the transducer parallel to the LV based to apex axis. And from the short axis view, try to avoid to not miss the papillary muscle, if is, there is a papillary muscle, and uh, try to avoid the uh, epileptic shape of the short axis view. 
So, to sum up what we said, we need some recommendation to standardize the echocardiographic evaluation of systolic function in mice. And this is a little a list of the standards that we, yeah, we consider most important. Animals should be sedated with the minimal dose of anesthesia, in this case it's a fluorine, keeping the heart rate above 450 BPMs and the body temperature around 37 degrees. The name and the dose and the concentration of the anesthetics, the heart rate and the body temperature should be clearly indicated in the papers. Systolic function should be evaluated by b techniques using either monoplanar or multiplanar evaluation, but the mod technique evaluation should be limited to diameters and the fractional shortening, and detailed description of the methods should yeah, used to calculate the same function has to be proven. Thank you very much.